Hi everyone and welcome to another really annoying video interview because it's always the kind of thing where I give away my guest because they're sitting right there but we need to give them an introduction anyway because it would be rude not to. Today I'm joined by, you would probably say the voice of women of wrestling, you know recently the voice of a certain tournament on YouTube that a lot of people will have watched, AEW, the, the Women's Tag Team Tournament Cup, of course former NXT talent the queen of FCW, I believe, is that another moniker I should stick in there. And, of course, the daughter of the legendary Eddie Guerrero and Vicky Guerrero. It's Shaw Guerrero. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thank you for this uh, very sparkling introduction. I'm, like, super <laughs> flattered right now, so thank you. <laughs> that, that's always good to hear. The one place that I want to start, because we just, just mentioned it there, you appearing in AEW. That was a lovely surprise for me because I'm a big fan of women's wrestling anyway. But, you know, the, the names that were there, obviously we had uh, Veda Scott on commentary. You had Alundra Blaze or Medusa appearing and then yourself as well appearing in the ring, which was a lovely surprise. No one's seen it coming. How did that come about? Honestly, it was quite a surprise for me as well. Um, my mom called me and because she is um, like a more permanent fixture at AEW yeah. and was just like, hey, you're still announcing, right? And I'm like, absolutely. So she's like, okay, hold tight. Someone's going to call you. And I was like, uh, okay. And then like Brandy Rhodes reached out to me and was just like, hey, do you want to announce a women's tag team cup tournament? And I was like, hell yes. So it was literally as simple as that. I like full on was just like there, whatever AEW needs me for. I was extremely flattered to participate. Most definitely. And you mentioned there your mom being a more permanent fixture, of course. Will we see you again in AEW? Is the door still open? Might we see you wrestling in AEW at any point? You never, ever know. That's like one of the things in wrestling, never say never. And so I am ready for AEW whenever that comes about. But for right now, I'm going to focus on taking the independent scene by storm with wrestling. So it's been six years since I've wrestled. So I'm really excited. That's one thing I'm definitely going on to. The, the final AEW question I need to ask, you know, there's a lot of criticism over AEW. Oh, the, the tournament was on YouTube and all this kind of thing. For me, I thought it was brilliant because it put a spotlight on the thing that was to be spotlit. You know, and we seen what we needed to see. Who impressed you the most out of that tournament? That's so hard. That's really hard because there was just so much amazing talent. And I am a fan of Ivalice and Diamante, which clearly they took the whole thing, which was amazing. But I mean, like, um, otherwise, I mean, Tay Conti really, really just stood out to me as like a huge contender. And obviously we saw Anna Jay just, yeah. she's been coming into her own a lot, especially since um, hooking up with the Dark Order. So honestly, I think a lot of talent flourished throughout that entire Tag Team Cup tournament. But I do think the best team took it in the end. And um, major congratulations once again to Eva Lee and Diamante. Yeah, most definitely. Hard to disagree with the winners, of course. <laughs> but you mentioned it there. It's been a little while since you've been in the ring. But of course, I think it was only last month, maybe two months ago, you announced that you're going to be returning to the indie scene. Obviously, people would be like, oh, yeah, as an announcer, because familiar with your announce work. But as a wrestler, too, yes. it's, been a, it's been a little while, I believe. Uh, of course, you said six years there. Uh, How much have you been training? How much have you been keeping up with it? Or are you just relying on... I'll go in there and it's muscle memory. Hopefully it all comes flooding back. Oh, believe me, I'm trading. I'm <laughs> trading. Um, I've been training for the past um, like two months um, pretty consistently. Um, there is a lot of muscle memory there because I was with um, the FCW slash NXT brand for around three years. And that training schedule was pretty much you train every day. You train every single day. And so that's still within me, whether I like it or not. Um, but I have been training with freelance wrestling here in Chicago and they are absolutely fantastic. So I've been very blessed to have a ring very like less than 10 minutes from my house. Yeah. And the one thing for me is, you know, in NXT, I felt like it was a little bit of a missed opportunity because they didn't refer to you as Shaul Guerrero. Um, of course, you had a slightly different name. I believe you're going to be wrestling as Shaul Guerrero when you wrestle now. Is that how much of a conscious decision was that? Is it the kind of thing where you're like, well, I want to break out on my own under my own name, but also you've got the legacy there, and why would you not want to have the Guerrero name associated? What was that decision making process like? Was it something that even came into your mind? Honestly, like I, I did think about not using my my real name, but then it just didn't feel right. I just I went so many years like with not using my real name, and I understand that 
you know, NXT WWE wanted to have me earn it in a way. Um, but you know, I just, I didn't feel right coming under anything else. I'm really, um, doing a whole new character, like the ultra diva. She's still in there, but she, she's definitely a part of my past. I'm, I'm going to really try and be more authentic with the fans and just come in as me and hopefully, uh, it will be received well. So yeah, it's scary. Sure the pressure's be. on, the pressure's on. <laughs> Of all the times to return to wrestling as well, it's when wrestling almost there is as little wrestling as ever out there because, you know, everything that's going on in the world. But some yeah. would say, you know, the earning the name thing. I think you earn that by being Shaul Guerrero. <laughs> I'm sure you don't really need to earn the name, but hopefully, hopefully you'll be received well. I'm pretty sure you will. Of course, <laughs> the Guerrero name is one that's never far away. You know, you're still out there. Vicky Guerrero is, of course, an AEW and Eddie's name, I think, is more prominent than, you know, maybe ever in, in WWE because people are still using his moves. He's still referred to a lot on screen. How does that feel? You know, Sasha Banks obviously is quite a big advocate for keeping the legacy alive. How does that feel personally for you? Honestly, like anytime somebody talks about my dad, remembers my dad and, you know, like the beautiful gear that people are having made and the tributes are really wonderful. They keep his memory alive. And so I am never against that at all. Um, but I am excited to uh, kind of keep it in the family a little bit more and uh, be able to reclaim some of those moves as as um, something in the Guerrero family. But anytime I see somebody do something, anytime I see flames on gear, I get really excited and it reminds me of dad. So that's never a bad thing. Hopefully that's one thing. We'll see some flames on Shaw Guerrero's gear in the future. That would be- Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> but I, I cannot wait to see that. But yeah, of course, you, we kind of referred to it a bit there. The name, is, is there pressure on you? Like added pressure? Or is it the kind of thing where you're like, oh, I can just go out there and handle it? Because people might have either high expectations or very low expectations because they might be like, well, it's going to be another one of those instances where it's someone with a famous surname, you know, they've got a blank slate. Is it an added pressure or is it a kind of a freeing that you get to be of, you know, your real name? That's a great question. And I've been honestly meditating on that a lot more, especially since my first independent show has been announced. And you know, people do, like, I understand attribute some nepotism to me because of my family's been in this for generations. And so I do have doors open for me a lot easier than some people. And I fully understand that and, um, and whatnot. But along with the open door comes a very high expectation that, oh, she's going to be just as good as her dad. And you know what? Like, no one is ever going to be like my dad. No one's ever going to do mic work like my mom. Like, and it's not fair of me to put those kind of pressures on myself. And so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do my absolute very best my way. And so hopefully that will be well received. Um, but at the same time, I hope that the wrestling universe um, gives me a little bit of grace because every single wrestler on the independent scene has has to work up to who they are at that certain point and so i hope that they allow me that grace to be able to learn and to be able to um better myself every single independent show that way i can you know grow to what they want to see with you know little guerrero taking over the ring so um yeah there's pressure there's pressure for sure but i hope i can meet it to the best of my abilities and be able to grow over time that's one thing i love where you know it's like yeah, the, the door might be open, but the door's a little heavier for you to kick down as well because there's that pressure there as well. But, yeah. you know, we mentioned it. indie wrestling, of course, it is a bit of a strange time because there's maybe not as much going on right now. But, I mean, saying that, there was just a massive weekend of indie wrestling where we've seen a lot of people competing. Who have you got your eye on? Who in an ideal world do you want to get in that ring with? Oh, my God, that's so hard, especially because here in the Midwest, there's so many great wrestlers around. Um, my immediate eye is on um, Lainey Luck, who has the Zello Pro Championship right now, um, which is right in my backyard. Um, I would also love to wrestle Kylie Ray. Um, I think she's extremely talented. Um, but there's like so many more. There, there's just so much women's wrestling around. And so I can't wait to work my way through every promotion and, you know, learn from all these amazing, talented women and also, you know, be able to show my own moves a little bit too. Yeah, most definitely. Of course, you're someone who's been around the business for a long time, all your life. Uh, <laughs> so one thing that I think, you know, everyone always wants to know these kind of things. When you were growing up, when you were really young, 
is there any surreal things that happened with maybe any famous wrestlers that you look back on now and go, man, that was crazy? You know what? Like, it's weird because, because I was literally raised in wrestling. Like, I don't, I don't personally remember anything that was like, whoa, that was insane. Besides like meeting people backstage that actually weren't wrestlers. Like I would get like, as a child, I met like an NSYNC member one time and I was like, oh my God, like that's what I was freaking out about because like the people in the locker room that were wrestlers, they were more like family and they were just friends. And this was just like another day of dad's work. And so um, now looking back on it, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of crazy that like I get to talk with certain people and you know, like they're, we do have that kind of relationship and whatnot. But uh, I, I always like mark out a little bit when people are like, yeah, I remember when you were a baby in Mexico and you know, and this was like Norman Smiling. He, when, I, when he was training me and Norman Smiling is a freaking genius of wrestling. And he would be like, yep, I changed your diaper one time girl. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's like little things like that, that kind of like blow my mind a little bit like, yeah. But as far as like what I can remember, not really. No. <laughs> well, that's one thing, I guess, when you're so young, you might just not really realise what's going on around you, and it seems like normality. Yeah. So someone else, I don't know if um, how much you watch WWE, but there's someone else who has a very similar journey to yourself who is appearing now, and Dominic Mysterio. I don't know if you've kept up to date with what he's doing. What do you think of, of what he's doing, if so? Honestly, like, they're... Thankfully, now there was so much wrestling to watch all of the time. I think right now my main attention has been focused on AEW and the independent scene right now and just my own studies uh, with wrestling. But I have noticed like Dominic has come in. He's like done an amazing job. He's earned the Mysterio name. Um, and I, I see um, that he's doing a really great job. I don't know all the ins and outs of everything, uh, especially because my husband and I, fun fact, don't have cable. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually don't get to watch it that often but whatever Dominic's doing I know he's in a very similar boat as I am and I wish him all the luck in the world and for him to keep pressing on. Of course there was um, one particular storyline where his parents were up in the air so to, so to speak you know people who thought that Dominic's dad was Eddie due to <laughs> some storylines that happened how yeah. smart were you to the business? Was that the kind of thing that you knew was storyline despite being really young? Or was there any point part of you going, maybe my brother is Dominic Mysterio? <laughs> uh -huh. Honestly, like my, we've grown up as performers, uh, my sister and I, whether it was in the wrestling industry or not. So we were pretty smart to, it's a work kind yeah. of thing. And my mom and dad also wanted to make sure that my sister and I were comfortable because it was such an emotional storyline for everybody involved. So I think they wanted to make sure that we came out of the storyline and that Dominic came out of the storyline, like with our, what do you call it? Like mental health intact. Yeah. So, yeah. And our family <laughs> unit intact. So totally knew it was a work, but you know that everyone's doing a really good job when you're in a storyline and even you yourself get suspended from reality yeah. and you're like, this is fake. Like you have to convince yourself like, yeah, no, this isn't real. Um, so the fact that there, there were moments when we were taping and stuff like that, and dad was so emotional that you kind of have to wonder a little bit, they did their job right. So that was always really fun. Most definitely. I've got two final questions. Um, you know, one of them is looking back, one's looking forward. Who are your inspirations in terms of wrestling? Who did you grow up saying, that's what I want to wrestle like? Yeah, um, honestly, oh man, this is like, honestly, I, I loved watching Bull Nakano. I loved watching Medusa. I loved watching Melina. Um, I always really loved Melina and Michelle McCool when I actually got to be backstage and watch them, you know, put together their matches and go out and execute and then come back and how amazing they were. Um, and then currently, I mean, I have so many wrestlers that I love to watch, um, and I love to watch Jessica Havoc and I, I love to watch Tessa Blanchard. I think she's a wonderful executioner and um, especially with working with her in WOW um, and whatnot, as well as Thunder Rosa. Those are some of my favorite wrestlers to watch. Absolutely. And of course, we've mentioned it and you've mentioned the other part of this. You have been a very strong voice in wrestling, you know, an announcer doing, you know, stuff with WW and uh, AEW. Your husband, of course, is another very um, prominent, very famous voice. 
he's now going to be on the indie scene as well. Might we see you two work together at any point in the future? Absolutely. We would 100% love to work together, um, whether it's a tag team or it's funny because we've actually talked about like, would I manage you or would you manage me? <laughs> and that's the thing though, is like we can manage each other because we're both pretty strong on the mic. Yeah. So uh, that would be kind of an interesting uh, dynamic to see both of us together. And I'm, I'm excited to work with my husband. I hope we can do that very soon. Or even opposing in the ring as well. Who knows? Maybe that could come up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind getting a little bit of aggression out. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you so much, Shaw. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I wish you all the best on the indies. I'm pretty sure you don't need any good luck messages from me or anyone else, though. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, no, I was just saying thank you so much. And I know that you're going to absolutely kill it on the indies. So I would wish you luck, but I don't think you need it from me or anyone else. I know that you're definitely going to do a brilliant job and I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you so much. I'll still take it though. Absolutely. I need all the luck I can get. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you so much.